someone who can solve their problems, inspire them, and help to guide them. Being a thought leader is crucial to bringing trust to your firm as well. That's why I've invited Jason Duncan of Miller Farm Media here to talk about that because I know personally how he helps leaders become thought leaders through the use of media and video. Uh, Jason, welcome to Critical Mass Radio Show. Thanks for having me, Rick. Appreciate it, it. It's good to have you here, my friend. Before we get into the formal nuts and bolts, let's talk about you. Um, got an interesting story or the arc of your entrepreneurial life, something you can share with our audience today? Yeah, so um, I, I wanted to be an influencer before that was a buzzword. So as a teen, I saw music influencing my peers, and I wanted to be a musician. So I... I, you know, I was in a band and we toured New England a little bit and uh, that ended as most music careers did. You know, we weren't even a flash in the pan. We were somewhere, you know, we, we didn't get to the pan. <laughs> um, and then my brother and I had been playing with this this video thing, helping out some nonprofits. So I decided that I would make that my full time job. And, and and there's some the what I like about how the two connect is that music is a s- system at the end of the day. Right. There's there's structure. Well, video and, and storytelling has a structure, and if you know the structure in music, you can improvise and go wherever you want to, and the same with, with story. Okay, so there's a basic foundation from which you can improvise, both in music and in video. The, the saying, you know, if you know the rules, then you can break them. Okay, okay. We I, domestic violence advocate. Uh, Okay. Well, hello there. No pay. No problem. We're okay. professionals here on Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast. So I, I, I want to dig on that for a little bit. You say you wanted to be an influencer before that was kind of a term. What What were you thinking your role would be? Well, I mean, as a musician, you get to present ideas to people in, in a way they want to hear them. Okay. And uh, as as a content creator, as a storyteller, I mean, Hollywood and, and the media are telling us stories all the time, whether they're right or wrong, mm-hmm. and that's easily digestible information. So who are you helping? Uh, you know, we could talk about um, what is your most successful niche, because I believe everyone should have at least a niche within which we're developing our business. Where have you found, for Miller Farm Media, the most successful niche? A great question. So we're helping leaders become influencers by creating thought leadership video content and we have a system to help them succeed at that because content is common but if you create content that people want you can draw them in and and build an audience that way okay so can we dig on that a little bit sure so go a little deeper there when you say you have a system that's attractive to me as a thought leader because you know you don't want to waste time and money in this area. Can you share a little bit about your philosophy on the system that you use with your thought leaders and influencers? Yeah, so the idea is that anyone can create a video that no one wants to watch. And a lot of people get hung up with this idea that I can do it myself or I'll just hire a videographer and an editor and and I'll solve my problem. The the problem is that videographers and editors aren't creative directors and not video marketers. So you might get a video, but it, it does nothing for you. And the internet has hit critical mass when it comes to content. So there's there's so much out there. I mean, I saw an article today that Netflix and AT and T were fighting over who was going to get the show the show Friends. You know, that's that's valuable content, and whoever has the most money will get to get to run that in the long run. Uh, the same with your business. If you've got content that people want to consume, you will be the thought leader. Um, and the way we help our clients determine what need, is needed out there is we look at what your competitors are doing and we look for a, a hole that you can fill. Okay. Or, you know, it, it, oftentimes no one's even doing anything. So sometimes even, you know, st- starting off with this great content sets you so far ahead, no one can ever catch up. So in your system, are there identified types of videos that you want to create for your clients that you know fill a need regardless of the positioning they want, but there are certain types of videos that every influencer or thought leader should have available to the audience to watch? Yes, that we have two um, two types of videos that we, we recommend. Uh, one's called a new idea video, and the other's a, a thought leader video, and, and those are the way we structure the scripts of those videos to, to draw people in and, and bring them along. Um, there's this, this belief out there that all you need to do is create how-to content. And how-to content is a, is a great way to – is valuable content, but it's not necessarily thought leadership content. When you say how-to, is that like fact content, FAQ stuff or um, what? Yeah, it could be. Okay. Or, you know, how do I you know prepare, prepare my taxes or how do I keep from, you know, 
uh, you know, this or that or whatever it might be in, in terms of your industry. Okay. What have you found? Let's get a little technical here. What have you found as far as uh, the proper length that people are engaging in videos? Um, is there any re recommendation you could make to our audience for if you're going to create a video, here's kind of a do this, don't do that as far as length goes? Yeah, so it depends on the platform. It, uh, a few years ago, it was all, it, you know, two, three minutes was the rule. Now, if you're on YouTube, YouTube likes seven to 14 minute videos. Those really? perform the best, yeah. Longer than? Longer videos, yeah. Wow. Um, when you say YouTube likes, what do you mean? YouTube um, finds that those video work be videos work best on this platform. Okay. Um, Facebook, it seems to be the minute-ish, two minutes, depending on how, how dedicated your audience is. Um, when we're creating ads for companies, we're actually doing 15-second ads right now because we're getting the best engagement out of 15 seconds. And where do those run? Those That's for Facebook. Okay, 15-second video ads for Facebook. Um, LinkedIn, which is the if, if you want to become a thought leader in 2018, 19, yes. LinkedIn is your best opportunity because LinkedIn is hungry for video and they're pushing video content to the top. Now, the, the ideal length for that video is around a minute, uh, maybe a minute and a half. Okay. Uh, as those platforms grow, that number will grow. Um, I think some of the, the reason for the content length um, on, say, Facebook is because a lot of that stuff just sit on mobile and, and people are probably between things, whereas YouTube has become more of a, a sit-down-and-watch experience. Okay, and that's interesting because I th um, for those in the v B2B space, uh, LinkedIn feels like to me to be an appropriate platform to establish your thought leadership. And if video is craving is being craved by LinkedIn, then you ought to serve the beast the way the beast wants to be served, right? What what are you what would you recommend to a thought leader who wants to use a LinkedIn strategy for video as far as what do they say and do? What's the content? Right. So it's going back to, to looking for those opportunities that where no one's talking about certain things. It's it's talking about um, new ideas, not just best best practices, but next practices. Okay. Um, it's it's um, again, using this scripting format that we have where you, you, you draw people in and bring them along uh, to present a new idea. Um, and so when you say this scripting, wh wh do you actually have sort of an outline that your clients can use to construct the video messaging? Is that yeah, what you're we, we have four or five different outlines okay. that we recommend depending on the type of video. Right. Um, and, you know, a, a thought leader video might start off with you know, a bold statement or something that's a little polarizing to draw okay. people in. Get attention. Uh, yeah. And then you, you, as you move down through the script, then you give the information and, and some kind of call to action. Okay. I mean, I, ideally, you're always trying to, to, to get them to, to do something not so one of the mistakes i see brands making is they're not there's no call to action okay i was going to ask you so you what would be an example of a call to action uh visit um you know millerfarmedia.com to sign up for our free webinar about how to succeed with video in 2019 okay um that would be an example of one download our free white paper about the best things to add to your cell phone to record better video uh, those are two examples of call to action. Or, hey, buy my stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Typically what we do is we, we have those, those softer calls to action uh, with our videos online. You, you know, uh, m not so much, uh, will you marry me, but, hey, would you go out with me? Okay. But on the, web on the website, it's, and we recommend this to our clients, it's, will you marry me, will you marry me, will you marry me, buy our stuff, buy our stuff, buy our stuff. Okay, when you get them to your website. Yeah, and, th and there is a softer call to action, a kind of a secondary call to action. We recommend that brands have it towards the bottom of their page, so somewhere on the page that says, hey, if you're not ready to buy our stuff, here's something else you can have that is of value. But of, that's a key, th right, of value to them. To them. It's yeah. got to really, and it has to be valuable when they spend the time to consume it. Yeah. You yeah. can't just have a pretty cover. No, it, okay. it, it really needs to be something that's that's going to make the, them feel that you are a thought leader in their eyes. How do you advise your clients when they want to use humor? Humor is great, um, but humor is hard. And uh, it, we one of the, the guys, that are, one of our writers is a professional comedian. Okay. Um, and uh, we l that's our favorite type of video, um, but it's so hard to get right because humor is different depending on your age, depending on where you're from. I mean, I remember pitching a, a creative idea in a meeting once, and it was the um, 
I, I can't go into too many details, but right. it, it, it was one of those kid stories that everyone knows. Okay. And apparently the, the, the one person in the room had never heard that story because they were from a different country and they killed the idea. Well, six months later, a video pops up from their competitors using that same idea and they sold millions and millions of dollars with that, that, that creative funny video. Okay. So humor can work, but it, you have to be careful with it. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Yeah. So... Um, what makes Miller Farm Media unique in this space? What what is it? We've been I think we've been touching on some of the ways that you help your clients, but I want you to articulate that in a, as an answer to a specific question. What what makes you different? Well, I, I talked about it before. It's that idea that we understand not just how to make a pretty picture, but the the marketing of that video. So we're creative directors and and video marketers, which you know, we've got editors and, we, and we've got videographers, but that's only a piece of the puzzle. We want all of our clients to focus on growth when it comes to their, their videos. How, they, how is that investment going to grow their business? If it's not going to grow their business, is it really something they want to, to, to bother with? Well, how can they not, though? I mean, it, it feels to me that video is becoming the required way to reach your audience because so people are so much more preferring to consume content that is video-based. And if you don't have even an offering for them to select, you may never get seen. I mean, that's what it feels like to me anymore. It's sort of the adopted way to to get information is to find a video that you can watch. Yeah, but there's so much that out there that's hard to find. Okay. So you've got to be constantly putting yourself in front of the right people with the right information, and that's not easy to do. I mean, Right, but if you don't even have the video, you're not even going to get up the bat. It, right. it, You're it, not even going to get found. I'm going to read your white paper, or I'm going to watch the seven-minute version of it. I think I'll just watch the seven-minute version of it. It does help, yes. Right? Yeah. It, um, it, so regardless of the size of the company, if you want to be a thought leader or if you want to brand your company memor in a memorable way, it feels like to me you've got to have some video strategy inside your marketing budget. It's, and it's got to be a strategy. It just can't be, we're going to make videos. It's, okay. it's got to be a strategy. That's, well, that's where the difference is. And that sounds like what we started to talk about with you because you have a process. Right. To, that works across a lot of different types of influencers. Yeah. But the idea is you're trying to demonstrate your thought leadership. And, and that works on both B2B and B2C, right? It does. So individuals and brands both can benefit from that. Right. I, I, I think of the relationship of Elon Musk to the companies that he has started. I think of how uh, Steve Jobs had a brand that was personal brand that was separate to Apple, but yet the two of them work together. Um, in my opinion, I think small companies, the middle market companies, can do the same thing, where the leader has a brand that halos or leverages the company's brand, but is separate and distinct from it, right? Mm. Do you agree? I, I totally agree, yeah. And, and, and aren't videos the way to demonstrate that differentiation? That they're the perfect way to do that because it's, it's the way people want to 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 get that information. Right. Is that across all demographics? Are you seeing in your research that a baby boomer, just like a Gen Z, Gen X, everybody's the video is the preferred consumption method for knowledge? Yeah, ev everybody wants to consume video. It, okay. It, it's, I mean, the the boomers grew up with television. I mean, so they're they're used to it. It's it, it, there's no surprises there and. And what's interesting enough is that sometimes boomers will watch video because it draws them closer to their children and their grandchildren. Oh, wow. Okay. So when you're sitting down with a client, let's pretend we're having a needs analysis with the audience right now. Their CEO is listening to us live on octalkradio.net or in the future on, uh, as a podcast on iTunes or something. What kind of questions do you want to ask them or do you ask them to begin to understand if they have a strategy for their video and if not how you can guide them to that idea of a strategy i start off with a stupid question okay i ask them why do you want to create a video and that usually brings out whether this is for vanity purposes or if this is for some something more than just the ceo told, told me to go get a video or amazon told us to make a video um and, and, we, and we, we, we bring bring them through a path there and try to figure out wh what is the reason behind this call mm -hmm. and how we're going to help them reach that goal with a video. So if they if they have an idea and it's a and and it is you can work with it, it gives you the foundation. How many videos? How frequently? Like what is uh, the right cadence to get into this 
commitment because is, is it oh let's shoot the best video that we and, and we're done or is it a series and a when you say a process before i'm thinking you kind of sort of have to do several different things with that platform to get the possibility of some traction with the content yes if, if you're gonna be a thought leader you've got to release content on a consistent basis so every just like your favorite tv show you know every tuesday at 9 a.m you need to have a piece of content that goes out okay uh and depending on the platform uh, depends on how often you put the content out. So LinkedIn, you know, once a week seems to work best for for video on LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, face, so YouTube really wants a video every day. Wow. Um, and and that's, in my opinion, it's it's too much for most brands to handle. So right. go as much as you can. If you can get one a week, that's that's a great place to start. Okay. I mean, ideally, we push you know two or three a week is really where a brand needs to be to start to see organic movement mm -hmm. within YouTube. Um, but there's any anything you do has got to be supplemented via some kind of advertising. So it's not 100% necessary to win on YouTube to, to do that three times a week. So when you sit with a client, do is it okay if they say, hey, look, some of the videos, uh, videos are going to be high polished, professional, lighting the whole bit, sound, and that's going to be right and tight. And some of it I'd like to do as a, just a short thing on my phone and then everything in between. Is that okay in the process and the strategy for a video strategy to establish thought leadership? It comes down to your brand. Um, if you've got the money to invest in doing it, you know, um, the right way, I would, well, it's not even the right way anymore. It's, you know, with the, the, the high-end cameras, you know, say a cinema camera and, and in, you know, a nice location and whatnot, you're, you should go after that. You shouldn't, shouldn't shouldn't not spend the money but if okay. you're an entrepreneur who's starting out or a small brand your cell phone with a few tricks is perfectly acceptable uh, but you've got to know how to make that look right so that people don't start to wonder what's going on with your video but could you blend them could you say okay some of these are going to be those cinema quality and then some of the shorter stuff we're just going to shoot it you know with the right tools but not make that level i'm just wondering does it all have to have the same look and feel, or can you mix and match it in a strategy that still works with the audience, that they're not going to go, well, this, this doesn't have the quality of what I'm used to from Jason? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so the, you can mix and match. The, wh where the mix and match comes in now is that um, live video would be the exception to the rule. Okay. Um, so your live video probably looks a little more like it was recorded on a cell phone. Okay. It, it might be even handheld. Um, whereas, you know, something that's more of a sit down, um, you, you want to make sure that you've got at least, you know, you're lit properly and the audio is good and, and the, 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 the phone that you're using, if that's what you're doing is, is, is locked down. So it's not searching for focus and, and all these other things. Wow. Are people more tolerant of bad video or bad audio when they're watching the video? Definitely more tolerant of bad video. Okay. If, if your audio is bad, they'll tune out very quickly. Okay. But there's no reason why you can't get good audio, or sorry, good good video from a cell phone. That they've gotten so good that with the proper strategy, um, there's there's a way to win with that. Yeah, I was uh, I was at the Spectrum last week, and there was a young person who had their phone, and they were what I believe, after I watched them for a little bit, recording a segment for something. They were standing there in front of it, and they were talking to their phone. And I thought at first they were streaming something live or having a, a some type of a chat. Uh, but then I saw them sit down and sort of look back over it, and they'll go to take two. So obviously they were creating some content for a future use. I'm just wondering because I, I think... Uh, I worry sometimes in talking with my clients who want to who want to establish awareness that they get afraid of the amount of commitment required to do a video strategy. Can you help those people out there who might be feeling that right now understand why it's not well? It's a commitment. It's a reasonable commitment based on working with Miller Farm Media and your process. Yeah, so that we've actually created a um, a training course that we're launching in the next few weeks that teaches. Uh, brands and thought leaders who were just starting out how to get those results with with a cell phone. Um, but it starts off by recording as much as you can in one day. Um, so what we tell our clients is, you know, over the next four weeks, write four scripts, write, write one a week. And okay. then on the fourth week, sit down and record those four scripts. And we'll build you a system that, you know, either you can edit it uh, we actually recommend YouTube for editing, which which sounds silly, but you upload the video to YouTube, make your edits, and you can pull it back down and send it wherever you want oh, to. Wow. Okay. So you have to spend money on editing software. Uh, it's very intuitive, very easy. You add your your titles 
and you're you're and you're good to go. All that can be done within YouTube. Within YouTube. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, do you work on a project basis, or do you work on a retainer basis? How does Miller Farm Media help your thought leaders and other clients kind of create consistent quality content for video? Yeah, so great question. That we we actually have a few different ways that com brands can engage with us. Okay, uh, we have our our training course, which is going to launch in a, in a few weeks. Okay, um, we have con con hourly consulting that we do, um, and then we have some other smaller packages to help thought leaders work. We we real work nationwide, worldwide, really, uh, with this online system that we have. And then um, for the for the brands that you know want something that's kind of the next level, um, it's all you know custom quoted and. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we, uh, we it's, it's a lot. Of, some of it, especially when you get to to the marketing part of it, it's it's, it's based on a retainer, okay, uh, to to manage the ads and to keep things going. So, what has been your experience? We're gonna get, I'm getting the wrap up sign here on Critical Mass Radio Show and Podcast, but I'm wondering how long does it take from when they get started with this to when they are seeing some effect of the effort? You know what I mean? Where people are starting to get noticed. If if they follow our system, yes. it, within a few weeks. Okay. Uh, but it, it takes a commitment of buying the ads for say Facebook or LinkedIn. Um, we actually find that people are growing the fastest are using Facebook, even if you're a B two B brand. Really? Because you can buy ads for two to five cents, um, and at that price, you can you can reach a lot of people. Whereas LinkedIn, while it's more targeted, it's it's very much more expensive to get uh, people to view your videos. Okay, so they, they they make the commitment, they invest the thought power, then they make the videos, and they create a system to process to, to drive the engagement, and then within a couple, a period of time, they're starting to get some feedback to that. Uh, and how how long, what, what type of a commitment are you asking people to make to really drive them to being recognized as a, you know, there are thought leaders and then there are thought leaders. I mean, if they really are aggressive in their desire to want to be known, let's say, nationally for something. Well, as you know, as a thought leader, it, it, it's a never-ending process. I mean, okay. if, if you really want to get to that level, you've always got to be staying in front of your audience. Right. Um, as, you, as you grow that audience, you can pull back a little bit. Um, but you've got to keep that. Keep it's just like Hollywood stars, right? They're always in the news because they've got to keep their face out there so that they're a valuable commodity for the for the studios. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing for a thought leader. So, uh, okay, this is really my last question because I'm actually a little bit over time here, ladies and gentlemen. I know Paul. I'm gonna tell me the name Miller Farm Media. Why? So, um, I believe that we need to treat people with with dignity. And I was I I grew up in Northern Maine. My grandparents owned a farm called Miller Farm. And um, you know, no matter who pulled in the yard, those people were always were always treated well. You know, um, until they were given a reason not to, I guess. Um, and and so I wanted to use that name because there were no no grandkids that that got that name, to as a reminder to me to make sure that I treated everyone well. Hmm. Um, and uh, you know, it's 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 it, it's a constant reminder when you pick up the phone and say hi, you know, Miller Farm Media, that you know this, th there's there's some people you know watching. That and that care about me, and and there's a legacy that to 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 stand to to uh, to to live up to. So, if someone wants to find you online, um, MillerFarmMe.com or at Jason Duncan on all the uh, social media platforms. Or can you uh, spell it, Jason? Yeah, Duncan. oh, that's a good. Uh, yeah. It's uh, J A Y S O N D U N C A N or at Miller Farm Media on all the same platforms. Thank you for being a friend of the program, a part of the critical mass community. I've excited. I was excited to have you come in here and talk about what it is that you do for people. I think, I think you provide a very valuable service, and uh, I appreciate you sharing a little bit about what you know about video marketing and video creation here on the show today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Well, let's thank the engineer, Paul Roberts. Thank you, Paul Roberts. Thanks, Paul. And our yeah, right. Our producers, without whom I couldn't do this show, Crystal Nunley, Haley Stern, and Joan Park. If you'd like to connect with me, let's do it on LinkedIn first. I'm Richard Franzi, F-R-A-N-Z-I. And until our next show, I hope all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction. You have